Hello and welcome to this film which is about um, equilibrium systems which we make use of in industry. Um, it's a film that kind of is designed to come after the series of films about equilibrium processes. Um, so it, it uses quite a lot of the principles that we've covered up until now. So it's, it's not a good one to watch before you do those films. It's a good one to watch at the end of the topic. And really and truly, I suppose, it, it looks at the difference between maximizing yield, so producing as much product as we can, the difference between that and um, optimizing the conditions, in other words, um, setting them up in such a way so that we can make as much money from the chemicals we're producing as possible. Okay, and we're going to do this by looking at a couple of different industrial processes. Okay, now I guess so far we've been thinking of um, equilibrium processes in terms of yield or the position of equilibrium, right? So I suppose if you're planning to make chemical C in industry, let's say this is something you can sell, um, then surely maximizing our yield should be the name of the game really. Right? The more C you can make from your equilibrium process, the more money you're going to be able to make because the more you're going to be able to sell. However, things aren't quite as simple as that. Okay, So it's not simply a matter of, in industry, setting the conditions up so that we make as much C as possible, but some, we're going to need to consider some other things as well. Such as the fact that if you're going to take a long time to do your reaction, so if your reaction takes a long time to reach equilibrium, even if you're going to make a lot of your product, you won't be able to be selling it. You'll be sitting around waiting for it to form. So that's going to cost you money. Also, if you're going to have to be heating your um, system, or perhaps if you're going to have to be building very strong equipment to contain your equilibrium process, then that's going to cost you money, and that's going to eat into your profits. So there's a balancing act here going on, right? We want to make a lot of the chemical, we want to increase the yield, but we don't want to cost ourselves too much money in the process. Okay, the first process we're going to look at as an illustration of this is called the Harbour process, um, so-called because it was uh, first kind of done on an industrial scale by this chap Fritz Harbour, who actually um, worked for the Germans for some time um, in the war effort. He produced chemical weapons and he also basically enabled them to make fertilizers when they when they stopped being able to import saltpeter across the Atlantic. So um well I suppose you could say he, he had a he had a hand in extending some of the wars at least. Anyway, um the process that he um in or that he designed different conditions for, I suppose you could say is this one here, the one that makes ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. Okay, And it's an incredibly important chemical to us at the moment, ammonia. It's used to make pretty much all the fertilizers that are artificially manufactured in the world, so it keeps the world alive, because without fertilizers, there's no way we'd be able to produce enough food. So um, without wanting to make this, um, this film too long, really, because the last one um, about equilibrium constants was quite long, let's, um, let's crack on a little bit, OK? So now, we're looking here at a graph that shows how we might maximize yield in the harbour process. And using the principles that we've learned earlier, we should be able to see why this is, OK? We've got the reaction here, and we're told that the enthalpy change for it is negative, and therefore, the forward reaction we should be able to tell from this, okay, we should be able to decide that from that information, is exothermic in the forward direction and endothermic in the backwards direction. We can also hopefully see that there's two moles of gas on the right, but four on the left. So the right hand side exerts a smaller pressure than the left hand side. Now, bearing that in mind, here we've got a graph which shows what happens to the yield of ammonia, so the percentage of ammonia at equilibrium, at different temperatures, so that's the different colored lines, and at different pressures, ranging from 0 to 600 atmospheres. Okay, So you can see that for every temperature, as the pressure increases, so the yield increases. And that's something we should be able to predict by now. Okay, As the pressure goes up, the system wants to lower it, so it's going to move, according to Le Chatelier's principle, it's going to move to the side with the fewest moles of gas. Okay. What about the temperature? Well, we can see that as the temperature gets colder, the yield is increasing. Okay, And again, that shouldn't really surprise us, 
because if we lower the temperature, the system wants to raise it, so it's going to favour the exothermic reaction according to Le Chatelier's principle, and this is the forward one, so that's going to increase our yield. So the best thing, if I mean, is if we're only considering yield, is to have a low temperature, as low as possible, and as high a pressure as possible. However, the optimum conditions, right, and it's important you understand the difference between these. Optimum does not mean the best for yield, but more the best for making money. Okay, so if you're asked about optimum conditions, you're often going to be thinking about a compromise. Okay, now look here at the conditions that we've chosen. We've got four to 500 degrees centigrade, uh, four to 450, which really isn't all that high in the grand scheme of things. Okay, we can go much, much higher than that. But we're obviously heating it up. That's not room temperature. Okay, so they're heating it up a little bit because they don't want the rate to drop too low. Okay. Because as particles speed up, there's going to be a greater proportion of them with enough energy to react, and so the rate will increase. So if you start with nitrogen and hydrogen, you're going to get to equilibrium quicker. But they're not going too high, because remember that high temperatures are going to reduce the yield. We're doing it about 200 atmospheres of pressure, which um, certainly is pretty high by um, most tyre standards or something like that. But compared to the pressures we can achieve, it's tiny. Okay, but it's clearly an increase in pressure. Okay, why aren't we going as high as we possibly can into thousands and thousands of atmospheres? Well, because then you have to build containers that have enormously thick steel walls, and that eats up your profits. Okay, and it's dangerous as well. You can have explosions at your factory. Okay, we're also adding an iron catalyst. Okay, now that's not going to come free, right? But it is going to give a greater proportion of particles enough energy to react because it's going to lower the activation energy. And so we're going to reach equilibrium faster. Okay, it's not going to affect yield, remember. It's just going to get us to equilibrium faster. There's actually some not so obvious things here as well. Okay, we cool the gases down and the ammonia turns into a liquid. This is a way of removing the ammonia from the system. But bear in mind, what's going to happen then? Well, our equilibrium system is going to think, oh, there's the concentration of ammonia has fallen. I'm going to have to replace some ammonia. So Le Chatelier's principle says it's going to favour the forward reaction. Okay, so simply by condensing ammonia, we can favour the forward reaction. Okay, and then anything that's unused, we recycle it, get heat it up again, but not too hot. Okay, because we don't want to reduce the yield, but not too cold because we don't want to reduce the rate, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so these are compromise conditions. They're a compromise between rate and yield. Okay, and you should be able to remember, explain those things in terms of not only Le Chatelier's principle, but um, the collision theory too. Okay, here's another very important process used in industry. It's called the contact process. And although there's lots of steps here, I suppose the most important one really is the one that makes sulfuric acid. Okay, and most important in terms of I want to make some money because sulfuric acid is a very, very important feedstock chemical. Okay, but in terms of equilibrium, this is the one we're focusing on. Okay, and again, we can see, or we should be able to see from this enthalpy change that the forward reaction is again exothermic, and we should again be able to see that there's fewer moles of gas on the right than there are on the left. So, again, we should be able to think about what are the best conditions for yield going to be, and are those going to be the same as we use in industry? Well, let's have a look at that. Okay, so maximizing yield, bearing in mind that the forward process is exothermic, we know that, and endothermic in the reverse direction, fewer moles of gas on the right than on the left. So in order to maximize yield, we'd want a high pressure, okay, because Le Chatelier's principle says that that will push this equilibrium to the right, because there are fewer moles of gas on the right, and we want a low temperature, Okay, a low temperature, because Le Chatelier's principle says that the system will try to raise the temperature by favouring the exothermic reaction, which is the forward process. Okay, let's have a look at the actual conditions that are chosen in industry. Okay, and again, we can see this kind of middling sort of temperature. All right, so we're heating it up in spite of the fact that it's damaging our yield. Why are we doing that? Because we don't want the rate to be too slow. We want the particles to have enough energy to react. Okay, so we heat them up, and that increases the rate at which equilibrium is 
reached. And so as soon as it's reached, we can take our sulfur trioxide out and start using it to make our sulfuric acid. Only one to two atmospheres here. Why is that? Well, in actual fact, this process at atmospheric pressure has about 98% yield. Okay, So there's no real reason to go spending money on increasing the pressure if you've already got such a high yield, but you need to pressurize the gases a little bit, otherwise they're not going to go anywhere. And again, we've got a catalyst here to speed up how quickly we get to equilibrium. Okay, I'm not really going through all the explanations in a great deal of detail because you should be able to do these by now. Okay, um, But it is important to remember, like I've said before, that you ought to be able to explain these conditions not only in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, talking about yield, but also in terms of collision theory, talking about rate and how quickly this reaction is happening, and also cost. Okay. So we're not using a very high pressure because we want to save some money. We're not using a very high temperature because although it would speed it up, it's dropping our yield and temperature costs money too. Okay, um, just a little point to note really just before we finish up here. Um, if you're thinking about how much of this do I actually need to remember for the exam, the great news is you don't really need to remember very much. But what you do need to be able to do is explain the conditions that are chosen. So if someone told you the conditions for the contact process or the harbour process and then asked you what conditions would give you maximum yield or they gave you the equation for the process and said what conditions would improve the yield of ammonia, you ought to be able to tell them that based on Le Chatelier's principle. If they asked you why is it that a lower temperature is used, then you ought to be able to explain that in terms of yield. If you're asked, why does the, why is the temperature increased in spite of the fact that it reduces the yield, you ought to be able to talk about collision theory and what effect the temperature has on rate. Okay, So once again, it's about explaining the conditions, not remembering them. Okay, And to do that, we need to know about Le Chatelier's principle and collision theory. Okay, And all the time in the industry, we're probably thinking about compromise. So if you're asked a more, a more lengthy question where you have to talk about all the conditions that are chosen and why, then you'd need to be looking not only at yield, but also at rate, and talking about why there needs to be a compromise between the two. And you might be talking about cost as well, and about safety when it comes to pressures. Okay, well the good news is, um, if you're in year 12 and you're studying waste chemistry, that's about it for equilibrium. You should be able to answer just about any question now, okay, if you understand it. If you don't understand it, or if you're struggling with questions, come and get some help. Okay, It's a topic that a lot of people find quite hard, even though there's not a lot of material in it. So practice, 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 and get help when you need it.